Hi everyone, this is Rafa from the Global Customer Support Team. So in this video, this is a part 3 video, we'll talk about file lazing and task flow using Firebox tasks in Cloud P2P or ISS. So in the previous part 2 video, I talked about how to use a file listener in the task flow at the start of the task. Here we'll see a Firebox task. The main agenda of this video is, what is a Firebox task? When to use Firebox task? Followed by a victim. Now what is a Firebox task? Firebox task is nothing but, like it helps in designing to a particular folder or directory by assigning a file listener to it. So when you run a task flow which has a file watch task, then the associated file listener will start. Now a file listener we know if we get uh, any event like arrive, update or delete, then it will now here uh, these events if it happens, then it sends a file event details such as desktop arrived, updated and deleted files along with the file details. The, uh, to that next or like uh, next to the rest of the flow it will send now if a file event doesn't occur the file watch task waits for five minutes so this is an important one it will wait for only five minutes by default and proceeds with the next step it can increase or decrease with this with timeout input field how to add i will show you you can add input fields to over the file listener properties that means in the file listener you have created a file listener with some properties now while you are using that file listener in the file watch task if you want to override some of the properties of the file listener then you can add it in the input fields so these input fields if you see these are the six properties that can be added at the uh, file watch task if you see notify file exists on the first task, this option would be present in the file listener also. But if you want to override this value at the file watch task, you can use. Next, runtime environment, you can use source connection, timeout. So this is the one. By default, it will be 5. If you want to increase 5 minutes, if you want to increase to 10 minutes, you can add this and you can uh, add a value 10. I, that I will show you. Next, to file pattern and folder path. Now, when to use a file watch task? So, uh, like, if you want to wait for a file to arrive at a particular location and you want to consume the file in the next step, then you go for file watch task. In the previously, we have used file uh, file listener at the start of the task. That means if you want to start the task flow when some event happens, then we need to use at the start of the task flow. But here I am using file watch task. That means I wanted to listen to a particular location. If some file arrives into that location, I will consume that file and I need to proceed. I will use that file in the next steps. So that is the scenario. Next, let's start with a quick demo. Now I am going to create a file listener. So let me create a new file listener. So click on new components and here you can see file listener. So let me create a file listener. And here is a value like you need to create a, you need to choose your project and folder. I'm going to choose my project and folder here. So runtime environment, you can you need to choose your uh, runtime environment. Next is source type. So as I mentioned, then if I want to listen to a local folder, you need to choose a connector and connection type. I am choosing a local folder and here I am going to use the same, whatever we have used in the previous video, the same location I am going to use. Next wildcard, so pattern. So check for, for files for subfolders, I don't need this. So I want to use arrives is updated only. I don't want this one. Next, if you want to stop, you can stop. I am not going to check these options and run the ID. So I am going to save this. And as we know, we cannot start. We need to associate to a task flow. Now let me go and create a task flow here. And task flows. So create this task flow. I am going to give a name for this. And here, like if you left side, if you see file watch task, previously we have used it the start task. Now I'm going to create a file watch task. And when I expand this file watch task, you can see, you can give a file watch task name if you need it. Next to file watch task, now select this file watch task. Now here, if you see, you can assign one file listener. So I wanted to assign file underscore, read underscore. So whatever we have created, let me, so this is the one. And let me select this and input fields. Now you can see input fields, nothing is there. So as I mentioned in the PPT, like file watch task will listen for only for five minutes. So by default, you will listen for five minutes. If that is not happening, then after file watch task, if I keep any data integration task, something, then it those tasks will get executed. Now I cannot wait for five minutes. So I just wanted to wait for one minute. 
So then let me click, you need to click on new. Now we can see. As I mentioned, there are six properties that can be overwritten. Notify file exists in the first run, runtime environment, timeout, and file pattern folder path. Now in my scenario, I wanted to use this one. Now you can edit this value. So if you click on this, so I wanted to make it to one minute. Next events. So if you want to add any events, you can add any events. Now, so if you see here, so these are the properties. Notify file exists on the first one is not. I didn't define the file is not. If you want to add it here, you can add it here. So these are the six options that can be overwritten. Now, let me save this task one. Now, if I publish, or let me publish. So when you publish, then only the task flow becomes a subscriber to that file list. Okay. Now, for so now you need to start the task flow. Now let me run. Now you can see view in my jobs. Now let me see in monitor. So all jobs you can see. So you can see this one task is running. Okay. So this is a task flow which we have created right now. Now file listener transfer logs. If you see, so file listener is also run. So if you see file is not zero files, it got completed. So if you see here, so file is not, it got completed at 11.44, it started. And end time is 11.44.57. So let me do one thing. Let me go here. When you publish this, now we can see, let me run this. See, now the file is is running. Let me place the file there. Okay. I placed a d.txt file in that location. Now you can see it start listening from 11.47, 6, and then started listening. Like it should, it will, it is going to listen for one minute. And I started, and meanwhile, I placed d.txt file. And you can see the, in the file transfer box, so it is completed. So, and if you go to all jobs, then task flow get executed because task flow we already started so now you can see so this is a task flow. so this is a task flow and let me click on all jobs one more time so this is a start time so we have started this and if you see running jobs also you can see here so this is the one like we touch some tasks so one task if you want to see so this is 1147, so the recent one. So in this task flow, we have a subtask. So that's why you can click, click on this. So this is a FL. So that means this task flow, uh, we have started task flow and the file listener event happened and the rest of the flow. So this file listener and the rest of the flow started. So there is no rest of the flow, other flow in the task flow right now. So that's why it got entered uh, immediately. So if you have a next, uh, uh, data integration or uh, any other task you can assign here in the task flow so the rest of the flow will get executed by consuming that file now the references for you is you can check this file watch task.html which gives you more insights on how to configure now you can also check info support channel you can provide your feedback at support video setting thank you for watching this video